Yeah, so hi everyone, I'm Ming Wei. Uh, I'm from Purdue University. Uh, I mainly focus on uh, fetish learning, natural language processing, and uh, AI for social good. And today I'm going to introduce our work, Only Send What You Need, Learning to Communicate Efficiently in Federated uh, Multilingual Machine Translation. And uh, this is a joint work with Don Jun Han and Christ uh, Christopher Brindon. And the format is a little bit, uh, format is a little bit off, but yeah, I just, yeah, so just a quick intro uh, for the process of fetch learning, so which is a recurring process over several rounds, incurring, uh, including uh, local training and uh, global aggregation. And it provides advantages compared with uh, centralized case like privacy preserving since there's no data sharing. But uh, it's not without its flaws uh, when we apply fetch learning to a uh, practical scenario. One critical challenge would be uh, the communication burden when applied it to recent AI applications that involve large models, for example, large language models in NLP domains. Uh, since we have to transmit like billion scale of parameters in those cases. And in a specific NLP task, we found that multilingual natural language processing provides a well-suited environment to discuss fetish learning, since the data sets are usually distributed, and the data distribution is natural, non-RID. And in many multilingual uh, NLP applications, it is difficult to transmit all the data to central server due to privacy concerns. And among all this uh, multilingual NLP task, we consider to use machine translation to uh, analyze this efficiency aspect of fetch learning. So considering uh, language models with large amount of parameters, uh, transmitting them in a fetch learning setup will cost a lot of resources and time. Some researchers working on multilingual NLP found a specific uh, pattern for a fetch learning case. So if we compare uh, language models parameter by parameter using its local model compared with its previous round, they found a, a specific and consistent patterns that the tensors or parameters will cluster in two groups. Some of them are uh, highly fluctuating, like the red hand side, this, uh, the red circle here. And some of them, or most of them are uh, less active. So uh, the researchers working on multilingual NLP and fetch learning start thinking a question that is it possible to transmit part of parameters during fetch learning to um, save resources? And they found that focusing on sending just one group of parameters, either uh, highly fluctuating parameters or uh, less active parameters can maintain uh, fetch learning's performance while saving a lot of resources. Uh, but the way they did it is to like send only a fixed portion of parameters. And uh, uh, for example, like considering sending only top 50% of parameters during fetch learning or bottom 50% of parameters during fetch learning. And it will cause some problems and some drawbacks. For example, uh, they did not consider a dynamic changing uh, distribution over fetch learning rounds, and it is not sensitive to the multilingual system's performance. So in our uh, study, we try to understand this situation and design a thresholding mechanism that uh, considers both performance, multilingual system's performance, and um, the dynamic changing distribution over fetch learning rounds. Yeah, so this is our goal. and. Uh, in this system, we designed a meta-learning based thresholding mechanisms that send um, the parameters using that threshold, meta-learn uh, meta threshold, that can consider uh, both efficiency and uh, multilingual performance. Yeah, so uh, we follow the general fetch learning uh, scheme and use fed average as uh, aggregation scheme. And based on the general, based on this general scheme, our method will decide the sending parameters based on the learn threshold for each client after uh, their local training. And after providing that threshold on the local train model, we will get uh, a trained one or a, 
W Plum, which is the uh, decided parameters for each local uh, local clients, and we will aggregate that model, those models, and send it back to each client for initialization for the next round. And uh, so this is the over overview of the system with our designs. Uh, it consists of three main steps. So after every client finished uh, local training, we will input the training loss L to our MLML module, which is designed as a MLP uh, structure. And it will take the losses as input and ge generate a threshold as an output. And after getting the threshold, the client selects which model uh, parameter to send uh, based on the deviation compared with its previous, uh, previous version. And the decided parameters then send to server for aggregation. So it will be a trimmed, uh, trimmed model aggregation on the server. And the final step is to update uh, this MAML module and ask it to reflect the performance of the uh, aggregated model, SR, and uh, ask it to consider uh, the performance, uh, multilingual uh, systems performance. Yeah. So for the first uh, component, we compute the deviation for each client, uh, parameter by parameter, comparing with the clients in its previous round. And the intuition is that the extent of this uh, parameter deviation provides an indication of whether this parameter is worth sending. And the, uh, based on this deviation and the learned threshold, we will select each parameter to be sent based on one of these two criteria, whether its deviation is greater, G, or less, L, than the uh, threshold. And after parameter selection based on the threshold and aggregation, we will update this MML module, which is the, the module that generates threshold, to reflect the performance of the aggregated model. So this figure shows the learning process and the optimi uh, uh, optimization flow of this module. And phi represents the parameter of, the, of this module. And after generating a threshold, and apply it to the local clients, we will get an aggregated um, model. And we then evaluate that model using uh, batches of validation data set on the, uh, on the client and update that uh, module using the validation loss. So this is the uh, kind of a quick over, overall process of our, uh, of our method. We follow the general fetch learning uh, scheme and build a sending strategy based on uh, this meta-learned thresholding mechanisms to control the parameter sending during uh, communication in fetch learning. So we evaluate uh, our method on two uh, data set and on two performance metrics. For efficiency consideration, we uh, use parameter saving, how many parameters or the ratio of parameter we saved, and the actual processing time for uh, evaluate the efficiency. And uh, in addition to the overall uh, performance and efficiency comparison, we also conduct several ablation studies to better understand our method. Yeah, uh, yeah. For for baseline, we consider several baselines for a comparison. The first one is the centralized case uh, that trained by uh, all the clients' data, and PMF average algorithm without any efficient designs, and DP method shares the similar concept with us, but they consider uh, sending either top fifty percent of parameters or bottom fifty percent of parameters. And random send is the, uh, a baseline that randomly send 50% of parameters. So for the first section, uh, we can see that, uh, as expected, centralized model outperform fetch learning method, but it compromises data privacy, and uh, it's not practical for multilingual scenario. And Comparing uh, federated learning methods, uh, random sending 50% of parameters without considering the distribution would harm the performance, and it achieves the lowest performance among all the efficient methods. Uh, the performance improvement of our method over DP method shows the uh, advantage of modeling a dynamic threshold based on this distribution. 
and our meta learn threshold learns what to send during communication to better optimize the machine translation systems. And uh, I think among all the, the efficient methods, our L method shows uh, comparable translation quality to PMFL, which is the F, uh, Fed average without considering uh, efficiency. Uh, it shows that our ability to preserve communication resources without compromising translation quality. And if we put uh, translation quality and efficiency together, we can see that random sending and DP method can save about 50% um, of parameters while, uh, with, uh, while the performance of them are lower than our method. And it shows that our method considers translation quality compared with them. And since DP usually cut within, if you uh, remind the, uh, the distribution, distribution shape, DP method usually cut within the last active, param uh, last active region. And our method uh, usually cut between these two clusters. Our L method costs more resources than DP method, DPL, but it also shows that sending too few parameters for DP method will harm the performance. And this, this also shows the uh, importance of a trans, uh, threshold that uh, considers translation quality. But considering our G method, we can save more than about 10% resources uh, compared with them and improve the translation quality compared with the, uh, the baselines. And in addition to the uh, resor uh, resource saving, we count the time spent uh, for each process. So overall, our method performs uh, faster, even uh, with the uh, addition designs. And for, for the first Appalachian study, we considered different thresholds, including random threshold and fixed threshold for our method. And the red arrows here shows the improvement of different threshold with the same operators, like greater G or less L. And we can see that the method with our learned threshold increased both translation quality and efficiency compared with the uh, other thresholds. And this shows the importance of designing a threshold that balance between performance and efficiency. And uh, this figure show the performance of our method with different uh, neuron used in MML module. So we designed an uh, MML module using MLP. So we modified the um, we modified the uh, neuron used in that module. And intuitively, using more neurons can uh, provide a better uh, threshold considering both efficiency and performance. And these are another ablation study uh, for the meta evaluation and like as uh, expected using more resources for uh, MML module can lead to better performance for the thresholding that considers both e uh, efficiency and performance. And uh, finally, uh, we consider a different scenario. So previously, all methods are initialized using the pre-trained weight since machine translation usually needs uh, a large amount of data to be highly accurate. But sometimes we may have some special language that did not have prior training samples. So we, like, we are curious whether uh, our method can perform as well under this uh, limited prior knowledge scenario. And it does. Uh, so for conclusion, uh, we look into the practical challenges when considering fetch learning in recent AI applications, especially in the suitable NLP scenario. And we show that designing a dynamic sending threshold to control the transmitted parameters is important during fetch learning. And by taking performance into account when providing this uh, sending threshold can benefit the scheme. And in the future, we aim to extend this task to different multilingual um, tasks in, in addition to the machine translation one to better understand its ability in multilingual uh, understanding task. And also, since this work uh, was actually proposed before those efficient fine tuning method for LLMs, uh, we apply this method on the four language models. And in the future, we are also uh, aiming to uh, implement our strategy to efficient fine tuning methods like lower our adapters. Yeah, so this is a quick like intro for this work and I'm happy to answer any question if you have, yeah. Thank you. Thank you.